In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to draw a glass of water with graphite and white charcoal. Let's first take a look at the materials we'll be using for this lesson. We'll be working on toned drawing paper, and in this case, we're working on gray drawing paper. We'll use a variety of graphite pencils, including an H pencil, an HB graphite pencil, a 2B graphite pencil, and a 4B graphite pencil. We'll also use a white charcoal pencil and also a blending stump. We'll first begin by planning out our drawing and draw the contours or the outlines. We'll accomplish this by using measuring. I've printed out the photo reference so that it matches the size of the drawing that I want on the drawing surface. And then I can use the shaft of the pencil to measure the distance between the top portion of the glass and the lower portion of the opening. And then again from the bottom of the lip to the bottom portion of the glass. Once we've marked these locations on our drawing paper, I'll draw a vertical line between them. Then I can measure the width of the opening of the glass in the same way, using the shaft of the pencil as a convenient measuring guide. We can mark these locations on the surface of the paper, and then we can focus on drawing the ellipse that happens at the top portion of the glass. Now, drawing an ellipse can be tricky because it is actually a distortion of a circle. But we'll pay special attention to our reference, and of course we'll draw loosely and draw several lines to find the right shape here. Once we have that shape in place, we'll move on and measure the lower portion of the glass where it's the widest. And then again, we'll mark this location on our drawing surface. We'll add a couple of small dots that are barely visible, just visible enough for us to see, and use them as a guide to draw the outer contours of the lower portion of the glass. As we draw the lower portion of the glass, we'll take note that it's curved and include this in our drawing. Now that we've got the basic structure of our glass in place, we can use these lines that we've drawn to make comparisons with the photo reference and start drawing shapes to represent the different values that are found within the glass. Basically, this drawing is made up of a collection of shapes of value. Value, of course, is the darkness or lightness of a color. We can measure value based on a value scale, which we'll take a look at in just a moment as we continue to complete this drawing by adding the various tones and values that we observe. This is most commonly referred to as shading, but we'll be adding both tints, which are lighter values, and shades, which are darker values. Now that our contour line drawing is in place, we can start to concentrate on developing the values. Here we see a value scale. Lighter values are represented at the top of the value scale, while darker values are represented at the bottom of the value scale. Since we're working on toned gray paper, we start with a base value somewhere in the middle of the value scale. At the beginning stages of the drawing, we'll concentrate on developing some of the midtones and the lighter values. In other words, we're going to be pushing our value range outward from our starting middle position, which is the tone of the paper, outward to create lighter values, and then downward to create darker values. We'll continue on here with our H graphite pencil, which we use to create the contour line drawing. An H graphite pencil is a harder graphite pencil, which means it produces lighter marks. But because it's a harder graphite pencil and it creates lighter marks, there are some limitations. We can't expect to create too many darker values with this pencil. It may be tempting to put a lot of pressure on this pencil to create darker values, but if we do so, we'll flatten the tooth or texture of the paper, which can lead to graphite shine. We'll concentrate mainly on the areas of darker value and midtone as we continue to apply this pencil here. These are light applications, but as you'll see, we'll progressively get darker with our applications as we start to focus on the lower portion of the value scale. We're leaving areas open where we'll add highlights with a white charcoal pencil in just a few moments. To create smooth gradations or slow changes in value, we'll use circular strokes with the pencil. We want to abstain from creating too many graphite hatching marks or any pencil strokes that are too visible. We'll eradicate some of those strokes with a blending stump in just a moment. For now, we'll move on to the lighter values or the tints in the drawing. We'll concentrate mostly on capturing the highlights or areas of strong light. This happens a lot with a reflective surface like glass and of course with water as well. As light passes through the glass, it creates strong highlights on one side, but it also creates strong highlights on the opposite side as well as the light becomes intensified as it passes through the water and the glass. 
Of course, we can vary the pressure that we place on the white charcoal pencil to create variations in the lighter values. More pressure placed on the pencil will of course result in stronger highlights. Less pressure, however, will allow some of the gray of the tone of the paper to show through, which will produce lighter values, but ones that aren't quite as strong as our strongest highlights. Here again, we're concentrating on the shapes of value that we see. We're not necessarily thinking of these as being highlights or shadows or, or what they technically are. Instead, we're basically just thinking about the shape of tone and value that we see. This concept is essential to drawing images that appear realistic. If we get too concerned over the actual subject that we're drawing, it can allow our left brains to take over and result in a drawing that looks cartoonish or unnatural. In this particular subject, and such is the case with many highly reflective surfaces, there are highlights found all over the place. We can even see highlights in the bottom portion of the glass. Of course, it's important to pay attention to these areas of highlight and include them in your drawing. Now, I'm using a white charcoal pencil to apply these highlights. And, of course, the benefit to using a white charcoal pencil is the fact that we can blend these applications to create smoother transitions between our values. If you don't have a white charcoal pencil, you can substitute it with a white colored pencil, for example, but you won't have the ability to blend these applications with the graphite applications. Now we're going back in, obviously, with a blending stump here, and we're blending the applications that we applied with the white charcoal pencil. As we go, we might find additional areas where we need to add additional highlights, as we see here, but as we continue to blend the graphite with the white charcoal, we create smoother transitions between the lighter tones and the mid-tones. Now we're ready to move on to a slightly darker pencil. This pencil is softer, and we're using an HB pencil at this point, and we're going to start to darken the values even further. Now, an HB pencil is slightly softer, as I mentioned before, than an H pencil. This means it's going to produce slightly darker marks. With the HB pencil, we'll again focus mainly on the midtones, but we'll start to focus on some of the darker values as well. And as we start to add some of these darker values or make some of the values we have in place even darker, we start to see that the contrast is increasing. Of course, contrast deals with difference, and in this case, we're talking about the difference between values. So as we start to make some of the values darker in areas, some of the highlights appear stronger. This is because value is variable. It is all based on the relationship of the values around it. So if you want to make a value appear darker, you can apply a lighter value next to it, and vice versa. As some of these darker values are applied, we'll still leave some of the areas where we applied the H pencil open. This will create more variety in the darker tones. Now, just like the H pencil has some limitations, the HB pencil also has some limitations. It's capable of creating wonderful midtones and some darker values, but our darkest values will be reserved to our 2B pencil and our 4B pencils. So it's important not to place too much pressure on this pencil again because we want to avoid flattening the tooth or the texture of the paper, which would lead to graphite shine. We'll simply continue to patiently work our way down from the top portion of the glass to the bottom portion of the glass, adding these darker values. Now, as you go through this process, it may feel like you're drawing the subject over and over again. And as you go through with each pass of a slightly darker graphite pencil, you may notice things that you need to add and include. This is important. This is part of the development of a realistic drawing like this. As you can see here now, we're going back with the blending stomp and gently blending some of these graphite applications. This again leads to smoother transitions of value and a softer, more natural appearance. Now, as you might have guessed, we're ready to move on to a slightly darker pencil. In this case, we're using a 2B pencil. This pencil is clearly softer and darker than our HB pencil, so it produces darker values. At this point, we're concentrating mainly on the darker values that we see on the value scale. And as we add these darker values, you'll notice that the contrast continues to increase. Softer pencils like this are going to show more of the grain or the tooth of the paper. So blending might be essential here as we work our way to the softer pencils. We're still allowing some of our HB as well as our H graphite pencil applications to show through here. Again, this will create more variety in the darker tones. 
And then as we did with the HB graphite pencil applications, we'll gently blend the 2B applications as well. Now we're ready to concentrate on the super dark values that we see. For this, we'll switch over to a 4B pencil. Now, depending on the natural pressure that you place on the pencil, you may find that an even softer or darker pencil may be more suitable for these darker applications. You may choose a 6B pencil, for example. Now that we've got our class in place, we'll concentrate on the cast shadow behind it. We'll measure the distance that this shadow extends out from the back of the glass using the pencil, and then we'll mark these locations on our drawing paper. And then we can draw the basic shape for the occlusion shadow. Now, the occlusion shadow is an area of shadow within the cast shadow where the shadow is the strongest or the darkest. We see this a lot of times with lots of objects, not just transparent ones like the one we're drawing here. We'll mark out the areas of highlight that happen within the occlusion shadow, and we'll mark their boundaries with a 2B pencil. Then we can go in and start developing the highlights that we see in the area of cast shadow with the white charcoal pencil. Now what's happening here is an interesting phenomenon. Light is passing through the glass and the water and actually becoming intensified, creating an area of strong highlight within the cast shadow. Our light source, of course, is originating from the upper left-hand corner. So because the light is passing through there, we see this area of strong highlight and some other abstract areas of highlight or shapes of highlight that are happening within the shadow. So we'll define these with the white charcoal pencil, and then we can start to darken up the areas around it with the 2B pencil. We'll continue to apply the 2B pencil and completely fill up the occlusion shadow. Then we can go back with a blending stop and work this application into the tooth of the paper. And as we do so, we'll smooth out the transitions between the more abstracted shapes of highlight and the areas of darkest shadow. Now, of course, the shadow extends beyond just the shape of the occlusion shadow. There's more to the cast shadow. So we'll mark the locations of the outer boundaries of our cast shadow. Now, since this area is much lighter, we'll use the HB pencil to define the shadow in this location using very, very light pressure. Then, once we have the shape of the outer boundaries of the cast shadow in place, we can use the blending stomp to work this into the surface of the paper, creating a smoother, more natural transition. Now we need to go back and make some of the values in the occlusion shadow quite a bit darker. So to do this, we'll revisit this area with the 4B pencil. Again, we'll use circular strokes to create even transitions of value. We'll also allow some of our 2B pencil applications to show through to create more variety in this area of shadow as well. And then of course we'll blend again with the blending stop. Now we'll go back to the glass and add a few last adjustments. And now our realistic drawing of a glass with graphite and white charcoal is complete. If you enjoyed this video, then I know you'll love being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our members have access to all of our drawing and painting courses on a variety of subjects and techniques. Each one of our video modules includes a downloadable illustrated ebook that goes along with the video. We also have weekly live lessons. All of these lessons are streamed for an hour each week on a variety of subjects and mediums, and they're recorded and stored in our, our library, our vault of uh, recorded live lessons from the past. So uh, the program just continues to grow week by week. There's also the weekly critiques, which are part of the Members Minute, where you can learn by analyzing the artworks of others. There's a year-long lesson plan for visual arts teachers that includes lesson plans, video resources, handouts, and much, much more. There's just so much involved in our unique membership program. So if you're interested in learning how to take your drawings and paintings to another level, I suggest you check out the program. Everybody starts with a trial, so you can go in and check everything out risk-free. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I wish you all the best in your artistic success.